Welcome to the Main Bible Study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today and for those who will listen in later on the archives as well. We pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. We are going to be completing 1 Samuel chapters 21 through 31 from the New American Standard Bible. And before we get started with that, we're going to open with our opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit in to lead us and guide us. Father God, we just want to thank you for the ability to be here together, to study your word, to read your word. Father God, we love your word, and we love your word in all its forms and versions. Your word is faithful, it is holy, it is true, just like you are faithful, holy, and true. And we just love you, Father God. This is our spiritual food that we rely on, and we ask your Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, direct us, open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart that we may be receptive to what we're reading and hearing. Show us what it is that we need to incorporate into our very being and our walk with you. Father God, we give you all our praise and all honor and glory belong to you, and we pray this prayer in the mighty name of Yeshua. Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So we're going to continue here. Last week we went off with uh, Saul being angry with Jonathan and actually being a threat to David. So Jonathan signaled for David that, yes, his life was indeed in danger and to go, and they parted ways. but. They remained as brothers, basically. They were committed to each other as very good friends. So we're going to pick up here with chapter 21. David takes consecrated bread. Then David came to Nob, to Ahimelech, the priest, and Ahimelech came trembling to meet David and said to him, Why are you alone and no one with you? David said to Ahimelech, the priest, The king has commissioned me with a matter and has said to me, let no one know anything about the matter on which I am sending you and with which I am commissioned you. And I have directed the young men to a certain place. Now, therefore, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread or whatever can be found. The priest answered David and said, There is no ordinary bread on hand, but there is consecrated bread. If only the young men have kept themselves from women. David answered the priest and said to him, Surely women have been kept from us, as previously when I set out, and the vessels of the young men were holy. Though it was an ordinary journey, how much more then today will their vessels be holy? So the priest gave him consecrated bread, for there was no bread there but the bread of the presence, which was removed from before the Lord in order to put hot bread in its place when it was taken away. Now one of the servants of Saul was there that day detained before the Lord, and his name was Doeg, the Edomite, the chief of Saul's shepherds. David said to Ahimelech, Now is there not a spear or a sword on hand? For I, I brought neither my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's matter was urgent. Then the priest said, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, the Philistine whom you killed in the valley of Elah, Behold, it is wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you would take it for yourself, take it, for there is no other except it here. And David said, There is none like it. Give it to me. Then David arose and fled that day from Saul and went to Achish, king of Gath. But the servants of Achish said to him, Is this not David, the king of the land? Did they not sing of this one as they danced, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. David took these words to heart and greatly feared Achish, king of Gath. So he disguised his sanity before them and acted insanely in their hands and scribbled on the doors of the gate and let his saliva run down into his beard. Then Achish said to his servants, Behold, you see the man behaving as a madman. Why do you bring him to me? Do I lack madmen that you have brought this one to act? the madman in my presence? Shall this one come into my house? 
chapter 22, the priests are slain at Nob. So David departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and all his father's household heard of it, they went down there to him. Everyone who was in distress and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was discontented gathered to him, and he became captain over them. Now there were about 400 men with him, and David went from there to Mizpah of Moab, and he said to the king of Moab, Please let my father and my mother come and stay with you until I know what God will do for me. Then he left them with the king of Moab, and they stayed with him all the time that David was in the stronghold. The prophet Gad said to David, Do not stay in the stronghold. Depart and go into the land of Judah. So David departed and went into the forest of Hereth. Then Saul heard that David and the men who were with him had been discovered. Now Saul was sitting in Gibeah under the tamarisk tree on the height with his spear in his hand, and all the servants were standing around him. Saul said to his servants who stood around him, Hear now, O Benjaminites, will the son of Jesse also give to all of you fields and vineyards? Will he make you all commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds? For all of you have conspired against me, so that there is no one who discloses to me when my son makes a covenant with the son of Jesse, and there is none of you who is sorry for me or discloses to me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie in ambush as it is this day. Then Doeg, the Edomite, who was standing by the servants of Saul, said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Ahimelech, the son of Ahitab. He inquired of the Lord for him, gave him provisions, and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Then the king sent someone to summon Ahimelech, the priest, the son of Ahitab, and all his father's household, the priests who were in Nob, and all of them came to the king. Saul said, Listen now, son of Ahitab. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. And Saul then said to him, Why have you and the son of Jesse conspired against me, in that you have given him bread and a sword, and have inquired of God for him, so that he would rise up against me by lying in ambush as it is this day? Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who among your servants is as faithful as David, even the king's son in law, who is captain over your guard, and is honored in your house. Did I just begin to inquire of God for him today? Far be it from me. Do not let the king impute anything to his servant or to any other of the household of my father, for your servant knows nothing at all of this whole affair. But the king said, You shall surely die, Ahimelech, you and all your father's household. And the king said to the guards who were attending him, Turn around and put the priests of the Lord to death, because their hand also was with David, and because they knew and he was fleeing and did not reveal it to me. But the servants of the king were not willing to put forth their hands to attack the priests of the Lord. Then the king said to Doeg, You turn around and attack the priests. And Doeg the Edomite turned around and attacked the priests. And he killed that day 85 men who wore the linen ephod. And he struck Nob, the city, with the city of priests, with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and infants. Also oxen, donkeys, and sheep he struck with the edge of the sword. But one son, Ahimelech, the son of Ahitab, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. Abiathar told David that Saul had killed the priests of the Lord. Then David said to Abiathar, I knew on that day when Doeg the Edomite was there that he would surely tell Saul, I have brought about the death of every person in your father's household. Stay with me, do not be afraid, for... He who seeks my life seeks your life, for you are safe with me. Chapter 23, David delivers Keilah, and it's K-E-I-L-A-H. -E then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines are fighting against Keilah and are plundering the, thresh, the threshing floors. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and attack these Philistines? And the Lord said to David, Go and attack the Philistines and deliver Caleb. But David's men said to him, Behold, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more than if we go to Caleb against the ranks of the Philistines? Then David inquired of the Lord once more, and the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Caleb, for I will give the Philistines into your hand. 
So David and his men went to Kila and fought with the Philistines, and he led away their livestock and struck them with a great slaughter. Thus David delivered the inhabitants of Kila. Now it came about when Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David at Kila, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. When it was told Saul that David had come to Kila, Saul said, God has delivered him into my hand, for he shut himself in by entering the city with double gates and bars. So Saul summoned all the people for war to go down to Kila to besiege David and his men. Now David knew that Saul was plotting evil against him, so he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring the ephod here. Then David said, O Lord God of Israel, your servant has heard for certain that Saul is seeking to come to Kela to destroy the city on my account. Will the men of Kela surrender me into his hand? Will Saul come down just as your servant has heard? O Lord God of Israel, I pray, tell your servant. And the Lord said, He will come down. Then David said, Will the men of Kela surrender me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will surrender you. Then David and his men, about six hundred, arose and departed from Kela, and they went wherever they could go. When it was told Saul that David had escaped from Kela, he gave up the pursuit. David stayed in the wilderness in the strongholds and remained in the hill country in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God did not deliver him into his hand. Saul pursues David. Now David became aware that Saul had come out to seek his life while David was in the wilderness of Ziph at Horesh. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David at Horesh and encouraged him in God. Then thus he said to him, Do not be afraid, because the hand of Saul, my father, will not find you, and you will be king over Israel, and I will be next to you. And Saul, my father, knows that also. So the two of them made a covenant before the Lord, and David stayed at Horesh, while Jonathan went to his house. Then Ziphites came up to Saul at Gibeah, saying, Is David not hiding with us in the strongholds at Horash on the hill of Hekelah, and which is on the south of Jeshimon? Now then, O king, come down according to all the desires of your soul to do so, and our part shall be to surrender him into the king's hand. Saul said, May you be blessed to the Lord, for you have had compassion on me. Go now, make more sure and investigate and see his place where he, where his haunt is, and who has seen him there. For I am told that he is very cunning. So look and learn about all the hiding places where he hides himself, and return to me with certainty, and I will go with you. And if he is in the land, I will search him out among all the thousands of Judah. Then they arose and went to Ziph before Saul. Now David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon, in the Arabah to the south of Jeshimon. When Saul and his men went to seek him, they told David, and he came down to the rock and stayed in the wilderness of Maon. And when David, I'm sorry, and when Saul heard it, he pursued David in the wilderness of Maon. Saul went on one side of the mountain, and David and his men on the other side of the mountain. And David was hurrying to get away from Saul, for Saul and his men were surrounding David and his men to seize them. But a messenger came to Saul, saying, Hurry and come, for the Philistines have made a raid on the land. So Saul returned from pursuing David and went to meet the Philistines. Therefore they called that place the Rock of Escape. David went up from there and stayed in the strongholds of En Gedi. Chapter 24, David spares Saul's life. Now when Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men in front of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds on the way where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the inner recesses of the cave. The men of David said to him, Behold, this is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I am about to give your enemy into your hand and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. Then David arose and cut off the edge of Saul's robe secretly. It came about afterward that David's conscience bothered him because he had cut off the edge of Saul's robe. So he said to the men, Far be it from me, because of the Lord, that I should do this thing 
to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him, since he is the Lord's anointed. So even though God had delivered Saul into his hand, he was not going to take judgment on him. He was going to leave that up to God um, because he had been anointed as king by God originally, as the original king. David persuaded his men with these words and did not allow them to rise up against Saul. And Saul arose, left the cave, and went on his way. Now afterward, David arose and went out of the cave and called after Saul, saying, My lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and frustrated himself. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of men, saying, Behold, David seeks to harm you? Behold, this day your eyes have seen that the Lord has given you today into my hand in the cave. And some said to kill you, but my eye had pity on you. And I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Now, my father, see indeed, see the edge of your robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the edge of your robe and did not kill you. No one perceived that there is no evil or rebellion in my hands. And I have not sinned against you, though you are lying in wait for my life to take it. May the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord avenge me on you. My hand shall not be against you. As the proverb of the ancients says, out of the wicked comes forth wickedness, but my hand shall not be against you. After whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom are you pursuing? A dead dog, a single flea? The Lord, therefore, be judge and decide between you and me, and may he see and plead my cause and deliver me from your hand. When David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? Then Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have dealt well with me, while I have dealt wickedly with you. You have de de declared today that you have done good to me that the Lord delivered me into your hand and yet you did not kill me for, for if a, man, a man finds his enemy will he let him go away safely may the Lord therefore reward you with good in return for what you have done to me this day now behold I know that you will surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hand so now swear to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants after me that you will not destroy my name from my father's household. David swore to Saul, and Saul went to his home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. So you would think that this would be the end of it, that David would not, con uh, Saul would not continue to pursue David, but it's not. Remember, he has that evil spirit that is working inside of him as well, and the, the spirit of God has departed from him a while ago. Now, David was anointed to be king, and Saul knew this. Chapter 25, Samuel's death. Then Samuel died, and all Israel gathered together and mourned for him and buried him at his house in Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. Nabal and Abigail. Now, there was a man in Maon whose business was in Carmel, and the man was very rich. And he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And it came about while he was sharing his sheep in, in Carmel. And the man's name was Nabal, and his wife's name was Abigail. And the woman was intelligent and beautiful in appearance, but the man was harsh and evil in his dealings, and he was a Calebite. That David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was sharing his sheep. So David sent 10 young men, and David said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, visit Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus you shall say, have a long life, peace be to you, and peace be to your house, and peace be to all that you have. Now I have heard that you have shearers. Now your shepherds have been with us, and we have not insulted them, nor have they missed anything all the days that they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will tell you. Therefore let my young men find favor in your eyes, for we have come on a festive day. Please give whatever you find at hand to your servants and to your son, David. When David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all these words in David's name. Then they waited, but Nabal answered 
David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants today who are breaking away from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have slaughtered for my sharers and give it to men whose origin I do not know? So David's young men retraced their way and went back and they came and told him according to all these words. David said to, to his men, each of you gird on his sword. So each man girded on his sword and David also girded on his sword and about 400 men went up behind David while 200 stayed with the baggage. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, and he scorned them. Yet the men were very good to us, and we were not insulted, nor did we miss anything as long as we went about with them while we were in the fields. They were a wall to us by night and by day, all the time we were with them, tending the sheep. Now, therefore, know and consider what you should do, for evil is plotted against our master and against all his household, and he is such a worthless man that no one can speak to him. Abigail intercedes. Then Abigail hurried and took 200 loaves of bread and two jugs of wine and five sheep already prepared and five measures of roasted grain and a 100 clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and loaded them on donkeys. She said to her young men, Go on before me. Behold, I am coming after you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. It came about as she was riding on her donkey and coming down the hidden part of the mountain, that behold, David and his men were coming down toward her, so she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain I have guarded all that this man has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that belonged to him and that he returned me evil for good. May God do so to the enemies of David, and more also, if by morning I leave as much as one male of any who belong to him. When David saw Dave, when Abigail saw David, she hurried and dismounted from her donkey and fell on her face before David and bowed herself to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, On me alone, my Lord, be the blame, and please let your maidservant speak to you and listen to the words of your maidservant. Please do not let my Lord pay attention to this worthless man, Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your maidservant, did not see the young men of my Lord whom you sent. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, since the Lord has restrained you from shedding blood and from avenging yourself by your own hand, now then let your enemies and those who seek evil against my Lord be as Nabal. Nabal. Now let this gift, which your maidservant has brought to my Lord, be given to the young men who accompany my Lord. Please forgive the transgression of your maidservant, for the Lord will certainly make for my Lord an enduring house, because my Lord is fighting the battles of the Lord, and evil will not be found in you all your days. Should anyone rise up to pursue you and to seek your life, then the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God, but the lives of your enemies he will sling out as from the hollow of a sling. And when the Lord does for my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and appoints you ruler over Israel, this will not cause grief or trouble, troubled hearts, my Lord, both by having shed blood without cause and by my Lord having avenged himself. When the Lord deals well with my Lord, then remember your maidservant, and David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who sent you this day to meet me, and blessed be your discernment, and blessed be you, who have kept me this day from bloodshed, and from avenging myself by my own hand. Nevertheless, as the Lord God of Israel lives, who has restrained me from harming you, unless you had come quickly to meet me, surely there would not have been, there would not have been left to Nabal until the morning light as much as one meal. So David received from her hand, what she had brought him and said to her, go up to your house in peace. See, I have listened to you and granted your request. Then Abigail came to Nabal and behold, he was holding a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunk. So she did not tell him anything at all until the morning light. But in the morning, when the wine had gone out of Nabal, his wife told him these things and his heart died within him so that he became as a stone. About ten days later, the Lord struck Nabal, and he died.
David marries Abigail. When David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord who has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal and has taken back his servant from evil. The Lord has also returned the evil doing of Nabal on his own head. Then David sent a proposal to Abigail to take her as his wife. When the servants of David came to Abigail at Carmel, they spoke to her, saying, David has sent us to you to take you as his wife. She arose and bowed with her face to the ground and said, Behold, your maid servant is the maid to wash the feet of my Lord's servants. Then Abigail quickly arose and rode on a donkey with her five maidens who attended her, and she followed the messengers of David and became his wife. David had also taken Ahinoam of Jezreel, and they both became his wives. Now Saul had given Michal, his daughter, David's wife, to Pelti, the son of Laish who was from Galen. So he actually, they did not have a divorce decree. He just took Michal from David, which was not legal uh, for them to actually do that, for him to do that, but he did it anyway. David again spares Saul. So here we go again, because Saul was not done pursuing David, as we shall see. Chapter 26, then the Ziphites came to Saul at Gibeah, saying, Is not David hiding on the hill of, the, of Hakala, which is before Jeshimon? So Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having with him 3,000 chosen men of Israel to search for David in the wilderness of Ziph. Saul camped in the hill of Hakala, which is before Jeshimon, besides the road, and David was staying in the wilderness when he saw that Saul came after him. Into the wilderness, David sent out spies, and he knew that Saul was definitely coming. David then arose and came to the place where Saul had camped. And David saw that the place where Saul lay, and Abner, the son of Ner, the commander of his army, and Saul was lying in the circle of the camp, and the people were camped around him. Then David said to Ahimelech the Hittite, and to Adashai, the son of Zariah, Job, Joab's brother, saying, who will go down with me to Saul in the camp? And Abishai said, I will go down with you. So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and behold, Saul, Saul lay sleeping inside the circle of the camp, with his spear stuck in the ground at his head. And Abner and the people were lying around him. And Abishai said to David, Today God has delivered your enemy into your hand. Now therefore, please let me strike him with a spear to the ground with one stroke, and I will not strike him the second time. But David said to Abishai, Do not destroy him, for who can stretch out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be without guilt? David also said, As the Lord lives, surely the Lord will strike him, or his day will come that he dies, or he will go down into battle and perish. So David was not going to, again, not going to take it upon himself or allow anyone to, to harm Saul at this point. The Lord forbid that I should stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. But now please take the spear that is at his head and the jug of water and let us go. So David took the spear and the jug of water from beside Saul's head and they went away. But no one saw or knew it, nor did anyone wait, awaken, for they were all asleep because a sound sleep from the Lord had fallen on them. Then David crossed over to the other side and stood on top of the mountain at a distance with a large area between them. David called out to the people and to Abner, the son of Ner, saying, Will you not answer, Abner? Then Abner replied, Who are you who calls to the king? So David said to Abner, Are you not a man? And who is like you in Israel? Why then have you not guarded your lord, the king? For one of the people came to destroy the king, your lord. This thing that you have done is not good. As the Lord lives, all of you must surely die, because you did not guard your Lord, the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is and the jug of water that was at his head. Then Saul recognized David's voice and said, Is this your voice, my son David? And David said, It is my voice, my Lord, the king. He also said, Why then is my Lord pursuing his servant? For what have I done? Or what evil is in my hand? Now therefore, please let my Lord the king listened to the words of his servant. If the Lord has stirred you up against me, let him accept an offering. But if it is men cursed, are they before the Lord? For they have driven me out today so that I would have no attachment 
with the inheritance of the Lord, saying, Go serve other gods. Now then, do not let my blood fall to the ground away from the presence of the Lord, for the king of Israel has come out to search for a single flea, just as one hunts a partridge in the mountains. Then Saul said, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will not harm you again, because my life was precious in your sight this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have committed a serious error. David replied, Behold the spear of the king. Now let one of the young men come over and take it. The Lord will repay each man for his righteousness and his faith, faithfulness, for the Lord delivered you into my hand today. But I refuse to stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. Now behold, as your life was highly valued in my sight this day, so may my life be highly valued in the sight of the Lord, and may he deliver me from all distress. Then Saul said to David, Blessed are you, my son David. You will both accomplish much and surely prevail. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. Now, much of the Psalms, I just want to mention, you're going to find much of the Saul, the Psalms that David wrote were during this period of time that he was being pursued by Saul. He cries out to the Lord continuously. And um, many of the Psalms reflect all of this. Chapter 27, David flees to the Philistines. Then David said to himself, Now I will perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for, for me than, and than to escape into the land of the Philistines. Saul then will despair of searching for me any more in all the territory of Israel, and I will, I will escape from his hand. So David arose and crossed over he and the 600 men who were with him to Achish, the son of Maok, king of Gath. And David lived with the quiche of Gath, he and his men, each with his household, even David, with his two wives, Ephinoam, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the Carmelite, Nabal's widow. Now it was told Saul that David had fled to Gath, so he no longer searched for him. And David said to Achish, if now I have found favor in your sight, let them give me a place in one of the cities in the country that I may live there. For why should your servant live in the royal city with you? So Achish gave him Ziklag that day. Therefore, Ziklag had belonged to the kings of Judah to this day. The number of the days that David lived in the country of the Philistines was a year and four months. Now David and his men went up and raided the Jeshurites and the Gerzites and the Amalekites, for they were the inhabitants of the land from the ancient times, as you come to sure. Even as far as the land of Egypt, David attacked the land and did not leave a man or woman alive. And he took away the sheep, the cattle, the donkeys, the camels, and the clothing. Then he returned and came to Achish. Now Achish said, where have you made a raid today? And David said, against the Negev, the Negev of Judah and against the Negev of the Jer Jeremelites and against the Negev of the Kenites. David did not leave a man or a woman alive to bring to Gath, saying, otherwise they will tell about us saying so has david done and so has david been his practice all the time he has lived in the country of the philistines so akish believed david saying he has surely made himself odious among his people israel therefore he will become my servant forever <laughs> chapter 28 saul and the spirit medium now it came about in those days that the philistines gathered their armed camps for war to fight against israel and Akish said to David, Know assuredly that you will go out with me in the camp, you and your men. David said to Akish, Very well, you shall know what your servant can do. So Akish said to David, Very well, I will make you my bodyguard for life. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, his own city. And Saul had removed from the land those who were mediums and spiritists. So the Philistines gathered together and came and camped in Shunem, and Saul gathered all Israel together, and they camped in Gilboa. When Saul saw the camp of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. When Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Orem or by the prophets. Well, the Lord had already, the, the Lord's spirit had already departed from Saul long before Samuel passed away, as we know. Then Saul said to his servants, seek for me a woman, who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman 
who is a medium at Endor, and Saul disguised himself by putting on other clothes and went, he and, and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night, and he said, Conjure up for me, please, and bring up for me whom I shall name to you. But the woman said to him, Behold, you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off those who are mediums and spiritists from the land. Why are you then laying a snare for my life to bring about my death? Saul bowed to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? And he said, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice and said, and the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. The king said to her, Do not be afraid, but what do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I see a divine being coming up out of the earth. He said to her, What is this form? And she said, An old man is coming up, and he is wrapped with a robe. And Saul knew that it was Samuel, and he bowed with his face to the ground and did homage. And Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And Saul answered, I am greatly distressed, for the Philistines are waging war against me, and God has departed from me and no longer answers me, either through prophets or by dreams. Therefore, I have called you, that you may make known to me what I should do. Well, this was a grave, grave, grave sin um, for him to do that, as we know. Samuel said, Why then do you ask me, since the Lord has departed from you and has become your adversary? The Lord has done according, accordingly as he spoke through me. For the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, to David. And you did not obey the Lord and did not execute his fierce wrath on Amalek. So the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will also give over Israel along with you into the hands of the Philistines. Therefore, tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. Oh, no what that means because Samuel is, is, is dead. This is his spirit. Indeed, the Lord will give over the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. Then Saul immediately fell full length upon the ground and was very afraid because of the words of Samuel. Also, there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no food all day and all night. The woman came to Saul and saw that he was terrified and said to him, Behold your maidservant, has obeyed you, and I have taken my life in my hand, and I've listened to your words, which you spoke to me. So now also please listen to the voice of your maidservant, and let me set a piece of bread before you, that you may eat and have strength when you go on your way. But he refused and said, I will not eat. However, his servants together with the woman urged him, and he listened to them. So he arose from the ground and sat on the bed. The woman had a fattened calf in the house, and she quickly slaughtered it and took flour, kneaded it, and baked unleavened bread from it. She brought it to brought it before Saul and his servants, and they ate. Then they arose and went away that night. Chapter 29, the, the Philistines mistrust David. Now the Philistines gathered together all their armies to, to Aphek, while the Israelites were camping by the spring, which is in Jezreel. And the lords of the Philistines were proceeding on by hundreds and by thousands, and David and his men were proceeding on in the rear with a quiche. Then the commanders of the Philistines said, What are these Hebrews doing here? And the quiche said to the commanders of the Philistines, Is this not David the servant of Saul, the king of Israel, who has been with me these days, or rather these years, and I have found no fault in him from the day he deserted to me to this day? But the commanders of the Philistines were angry with him, and the commanders of the Philistines said to him, Make the man go back that he may return to his place where you have assigned him, and do not let him go down to battle with us, for in the battle he may become an adversary to us. For with what could this man make himself acceptable to his Lord? Would it not be with the heads of these men? Is this not David of whom they sing in the dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? Then Achish called David and said to him, As the Lord lives, you have been upright, and you are going out, and you are coming in, with me in the army are pleasing in my sight, for I have not found evil in you from the day of your coming to me to this day. Nevertheless, you are not pleasing in the sight of the Lord's. Now therefore return and go in peace, that you may not displease the Lord's of the Philistines. David said to Achish, but what have I done? 
And what have you found in your servant from the day when I came before you to this day, that I may not go and fight against the enemies of my lord the king? But Akish replied to David, I know that you are pleasing in my sight, like an angel of God. Nevertheless, the commanders of the Philistines have said, you must not go with us to the battle. Now then arise early in the morning with the servants of your Lord who have come with you. And as soon as you have arisen early in the morning and have, have light, depart. So David arose early, he and his men to depart in the morning to return to the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up to Jezreel. Chapter 30, David's victory over the Amalekites. Then it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had made a raid on the Negev and on Ziklag and had overthrown Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they took captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great, without killing anyone, and carried them off and went their way. When David and his men came to the city, behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and daughters had been taken captive. Then David... And the people who were with him lifted their voices and wept until there was no strength in them to weep. Now David's two wives had been taken captive, Ahinoam, the Jezreelite, and, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him, for all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, please bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought the ephod to David. David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? And he said to him, Pursue, for you will surely overtake them, and you will surely rescue all. So David went, he and the 600 men who were with him, and, he, and came back to the brook Basor, where those left behind remained. But David pursued he and 400 men for 200, I'm sorry, for 200 who were too exhausted to cross the, the brook Basor remained behind. Now they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he ate and they provided him water to drink. They gave him a piece of fig cake and two clusters of raisins and he ate. Then his spirit revived for he had not eaten bread or drunk water for three days and three nights. David said to him, to whom do you belong, and where are you from? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, a servant of an Amalekite, and my master left me behind when I fell sick three days ago. We made a raid on the Negev and the Karathites, and that's C-H-E-R-E-P-H-I-T-E-S, and on that which belongs to Judah, and on the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. Then David said to him, Will you bring me down to this band? And he said, Swear to me by God that you will not kill me or deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring you down to this band. When he had brought him down, behold, they were spread over all the land, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. David slaughtered them from twilight until the evening of the next day, and not a man of them escaped except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken and rescued his two wives, but nothing of theirs was missing, whether small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything that they had taken for themselves, David brought it all back. So David had captured all the sheep and the cattle, which the people drove ahead of the other livestock, and they said, this is David's spoil. The spoils are divided. When David came to the 200 men who were too exhausted to follow David, who had also left at, at the brook Basor, and they went out to meet David and to meet the people who were with him. And David approached the people and greeted them. Then all the wicked and worthless men among those who went with David said, because they did not go with us, we will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered, except to every man, his wife and his children, that they may lead them away and depart. Then David said, you must not do so, my brothers, with what the Lord has given us who has kept us and delivered into our hand the band that came against us, and who will listen to you in this matter? For as his share is who goes down to the battle, and so shall his share be who stays by the baggage, they shall share alike. So it has been from that day forward that he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel to this day. Now when David came to Ziklag, 
he sent some of the spoil to the elders of Judah, to his friends, saying, Behold, a gift for you from the spoil of the enemies of the Lord, to those who were in Bethel, and to those who were in Ramah, of the Negev, and to those who were in Jatir, and to those who were in Aror, and to those who were, were in Sifmoth, and to those who were in Eshtemoa, and to those who were in Raphael, and to those who were in the cities of the Jeremiahites, and to those who were in the cities of the Kenites, and to those who were in Horma, and to those that were in Borashan, and to those that were in Athlac, and to those who were in Hebron, and to all the places where David himself and his men were accustomed to go. Chapter 31, Saul and his sons slain. Now the Philistines were fighting against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines overtook Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan and Abinadab and Malkishua, the sons of Saul. The battle went heavily against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was badly wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and pierce me through with it, otherwise these uncircumcised will come and pierce me through and make sport of me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid, so Saul took his sword and fell on it. When his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died with him. Thus Saul died with his three sons, his armor bearer, and all his men on that day. When the men of Israel who were on the other side of the valley with those who were beyond the Jordan saw that the men of Israel had fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned the cities and fled, and the Philistines came and lived in them. It came about on the next day when the Philistines came to strip the slain, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. They cut off his head and stripped off his weapons and sent them throughout the land of the Philistines to carry the good news to the household, to the houses of their idols and to the people. They put his weapons in the temple of Ashtoreth and they fastened his body to the wall of Beth Shan. Now, when the inhabitants of Gabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul. All the valiant men rose and walked all night and took the body of Saul and the bodies of the sons from the wall of Bashan, and they came to Jabesh and burn, burned them there. Then they buried their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree at Jabesh and fasted seven days. Now remember when before Saul came, became king, the first thing that he had done was help the people of Jabesh Gilead. So when they heard of this, they they went for their body, the, the bodies of the king to honor him so that it wasn't, you know, just laying there. Um, so they gave the bones a proper burial. That is the end of the reading. We're going to do a recap on this and then do an altar call and then close out um, this Bible study for this week. What a what a what a very dramatic end to First Samuel. Lots of lots of drama in in the book of First Samuel as well. A lot of things happen in First Samuel. Just as a recap, we know um, the book of First Samuel uh, begins what some people call the three double books of the Old Testament, uh, because we have a first and second Samuel, we have a first and second Kings, and a first and second chronicles these books tell the history of the rise and fall of the kingdom and the kings of israel and judah the book of first samuel was probably written between 931 and 722 bc and we know samuel wrote some of it himself and we see the people demanded a king we know that happened and king saul was appointed but the Spirit of God left King Saul because King Saul did not follow what God told him to do. Uh, and so he gave the, the kingdom over to David. And Saul was still alive when David was anointed to be king. So Saul had a jealous spirit in him uh, and a tormenting spirit in him. And he kept pursuing David. David did not kill, kill Saul. He left it to God to, to deal with. Um, prior, prior to Saul becoming king, Israel had been governed by judges. God was their king, but they wanted to be like the nations and 
So this is what happened. Um, and as you know, um, Saul sinned against God. God rejected him as king uh, eventually. And David was set to be the next king of Israel. Lots of things happened. We had uh, the glory of the Lord departed um, with Eli at the beginning of, of, of the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel. When, when Samuel was, was a boy, this actually happened. Um, so there was, a, there was a lot that happened. And the Philistines had, had captured the Ark of the Covenant at that time. So that, that, that was some drama at the beginning of 1 Samuel. The organization of the book of 1 Samuel is Samuel is the last judge. And we saw that in chapters 1 through 8. 8 through 15, we saw Saul being the first king. And 16 through 31, we see David, God's chosen king, and the anointed successor. But we see what he has gone through um, because of Saul's jealousy. But yes, Samuel was the last judge. Samuel was also a prophet, too. So, but, he, but Samuel continued to judge Israel. Saul was the first king. Uh, Israel wanted to be like the other nations around them, uh, and they demanded a king. And we can learn a great lesson here. Uh, we can have God's best for us, or we can have his second best. And, his, and the second best was the king uh, that was appointed, was Saul, because God was the best. He was the perfect king. Um, so Israel actually had the best that they could have. Now, again, in the chapters that we read, we saw that David was being pursued by King Saul. And David, David could have taken King Saul's life very easily, twice, on two occasions. And he let it be known that he could. But he respected the fact that he had been anointed by the Lord to be king. And he left it to the Lord to deal with between the two of them. We see the little um, issue that occurred with Nabal, um, the stingy, the stingy sheep shearer, uh, and he ended up dying. God struck him down and Abigail, his wife, ended up becoming David's wife along with Ahinoam. We see David, David had fled to the Philistines towards the end there. Uh, and was actually trusted by King Achish. Um, but when they went to battle Israel, he was turned back. But during that time, the Amalekites had struck uh, the home front there in Ziklag. So they had to actually rescue their families from the Amalekites. I mean, we can see how um, how that evil spirit really overtook Saul to the point of actually killing priests, um, the priests that actually gave David um, the bread of the presence. Uh, he actually didn't know that David, uh, David was fleeing because David told them something else, told them that he was on a mission from the king, and he took him at his word and gave him food, you know, the bread of the presence and the sword of Goliath. But Saul had the priests and all the people in Nob, the town of Nob, uh, killed, actually. So the, bat the, the battle did go on between the Philistines. We saw at the very end here of First Samuel, um, they, were, they were rising to battle. And Saul was not hearing from God, not hearing anything from the, you know, from the prophets or anything. So he turned to a medium um, and she actually brought up the spirit of Samuel, which is really a sin against God. Um, and Samuel admonished him and basically told him, you know, tomorrow you're going to, you and your sons are going to be with me because of this great sin that you have done. So we saw that that indeed did happen. And the, the men of Jabesh Gilead uh, as I mentioned, as as we completed the reading, that Jabesh Gilead was was the the town that actually 
they had threatened to pluck out their eyes and everything and, and to take them, you know, as servants. And um, they pled for some time and Saul got word of that, if you remember, and he came down and he defended them. Uh, and then that is when all the people in Israel were saying, you know, who said that he couldn't be king and look what he done for us. And that that's how uh, right after that um, Saul was um, sworn in as king for Israel. So, uh, but these were the very people that he rescued. So they actually, they actually made sure that uh, Saul and his son's bodies were, were taken care of properly. Father God, we want to thank you for this powerful word. We want to thank you for this word too in it. And in it, we can see that, you know, leaning on you is what we need to do. And yes, uh, it is really important. You have our very best interest at heart. And we see King David shows that as an example, even when he he was troubled, even even though the people that were with him were ready to stone him, he turned to you for comfort. He got his comfort in you and got his direction from you. And he moved when you told him that it was okay. You were going to you were going to give him the victory. And he trusted you. And indeed you did give him the victory. And that is certainly something for us to look at because you are a God that is true to your word, true to your vows, your promises, your covenant, and you will never break them. And we can count on you for all of these things. So in times of distress and in, in good times and times of distress, we can praise you. We can come to you in all times because you are trustworthy. And we, we know that we can count on you for your word is faithful. You are faithful. You are true. We love you, Father God. We give you all of our praise and all glory and honor belong to you. And we pray this prayer in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. If you have never given your life to the Lord, this is an altar call. We are going to um, open this up now for that opportunity to to be saved if you want to be saved and born again into the family of God salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ his Hebrew name is Yeshua which literally means salvation salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences and our Lord took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever he took everything all the sins that would ever be committed. And he took that all upon himself so that we could be reconciled once and for all. Before he had done that, there was an animal sacrificial system that was in place that only covered the sins of the people. He never took it away. Jesus, Yeshua, was the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world and also took on our illnesses and afflictions. So by his wounds, we are healed. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is not one human being that has not sinned and come short of the glory of God because of the original sin that occurred in the Garden of Eden through Adam and Eve, except for Yeshua, because he wasn't born in that line. He was born of a virgin, and the Spirit of God breathed into her. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. He had that plan in, in place. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. Yeshua, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but by me. The world will say there's many paths to heaven. That's a lie. It is only through the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, that you can have that ability. Because he's the one that died for each and every one of us. He paid everyone's sin debt in full. You have a choice, though. God's not going to force his will on you. So you have free will to choose whether you accept or not. 
um, Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, but he will be returning again to rule and reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. That is up to you. Understand that the life that you're living now is very temporary. It will not go on forever, uh, and your spirit will leave this temporary earthly body, and it will go. It it will go on forever. So, depending on how you choose, is where you will spend eternity. You do not want to be separated from. God, the creator of all things, who loves you. We were made in the image of God. He wants you with him. But that's a choice that you will make. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All you need to do is call in the name of Jesus, the name of Yeshua, and you shall be saved. Confess your sins. Turn from them repent. He is waiting with open arms to forgive you. He's already paid your sin debt in full. He's taken on the consequences that were meant for us. If that's already done, he said it is finished. It's just up to us to accept that gift of salvation. If you would like to do that now, if you would like to be saved and born again, you must be born again born again in the spirit, to enter the kingdom of heaven. If you would like to be born again into the family of God, you can say this simple prayer with me right now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner, and I realize I can't save myself. I need a Savior, and I know that Savior is Jesus, Yeshua. I believe he died on a cross. I believe he was buried. I believe he rose again, and I believe he's returning again to rule and reign as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I accept the gift of salvation today and the gift of eternal life, Jesus. I am asking you to forgive me of any sin that I've ever done. And I thank you for paying my sin debt in full. Today, I declare you my Lord and my Savior. And I'm asking you to send your Holy Spirit to live inside me to guide me in all your ways for the rest of my life. I believe through you and you alone, Yeshua, that I am saved, healed, born again, set free, and delivered from sin and the consequences of sin. And I also believe that I am healthy of mind, body, and soul. Pray this prayer. In the mighty name, the name that is above all names, the name of my Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. If you have said this prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I am going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or a Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Bible and not doctrines of men, philosophies out of colleges and what have you, but the truth of the Holy Bible. Get a copy of the Bible. You can go to Bible Hub, Bible Gateway. You can sample all the different versions that are out there of the Bible. And the one that you're most comfortable with is the one that you should purchase as a first purchase and then make a commitment to read it. You can certainly continue to partake of our Bible studies. We've got completed Bible studies, the English Standard Version, which took two years to do, the Tree of Life Version, which also took two years. They are completed. They're archived. You can you can certainly partake of that. We started this Bible study, which will take two years. We started this one in January. Um, and so what has already been done is archived. So we also have additional Bible studies of the Tanakh and the Passion Translation that are archived as well, that we're in the process of doing as well. But everything that we've done so far is archived on YouTube and Rumble. And our social media pages. You are welcome to that. That is free. I will also encourage you to get into uh, the Bible study at the local congregation that you, ch you choose to join as well. Develop a prayer life. Pray to your Heavenly Father. You are now part of the family of God, whereby the Creator of all, th all things is now your Heavenly Father, and you can go directly to Him. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He loves you. 
and he wants relationship with you. So you can talk to him as you would talk to anyone, talk as you would talk to a friend. Abraham was a friend to God. All the prophets spoke directly to God. Moses spoke directly to God. As you read the Bible, you can see that there are people that spoke directly to God and heard from him. You can too. You just need to set the time aside to spend time with him. And he, he, he is there for you. With that being said, we're going to bring the Bible study to a close with the Aaronic blessing, the priestly blessing. It is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons, um, basically explaining that he wanted to put his name on the children of Israel and bless them. He had chosen Israel to be his chosen nation, and he would be their God. So he really loved them. He wanted to... He, he, wanted to bless them, and he gave specific words in which to be ministered over them. Aaron was the high priest during those days, and his sons were Levite priests who ministered to the people. Now, this blessing has lasted through the ages. Uh, if you've gone to any church service or synagogue service, you've heard this at the end of services. And I'm going to say, too, um, when you're born again into the family of God, God has put his name on you. You are his child. No one can take you from him. You are his child now, and he loves to bless you. The blessing is also for you. You are grafted into Israel. You, you, you are not Israel. You're grafted in as part of the community of the Israel, both Jew and Gentile believers in Yeshua. That is the family of God. So I'm going to say this blessing in Hebrew, and I'm going to say it in English then. In Hebrew, it goes like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. It is still early enough in the week to say Shavuot Tov. Have a good week. Um, again, in this upcoming week, we've got um, the Tanakh and the Passion Translation. Uh, also in the United States, July 4th is our Independence Day. And also this coming Saturday is the first Shabbat of the month of July. So we will be having Holy Communion. Also that same evening, uh, we will be having Rosh Kadesh services and bringing in the month of Tammuz and also having Holy Communion in the evening. It is not very often that both of those services are on the same day, but uh, this is one of these unusual times where it is occurring. So um, you will have the opportunity to come to the table of the Lord in both the Shabbat service and the Rosh Kadesh service. So that is all. And God bless each and every one of you. Again, Shavuot Tov. Have a, have a good week.